these two blocks illustrate exactly why you should go guided with all your implant surgeries every time. Let me show you why. So here we have our fall block experiment. And what you have here is a one inch by one inch by one inch cube made out of foam. On one side, we have a representative D1 bone, which is dense foam, representing the compact bone. On the other side, we have D4 foam, which is designed to represent the spongy bone. They are laminated right down the center. And the idea is this, we're going to do a drilling protocol twice. The first time, we're gonna drill without a guide and we're going to try to place the hole right in the center of the cube. So it couldn't be any easier because you can clearly see where the center is. And then we're gonna do it again, but the second time we're gonna do it with a surgical guide. Let's see how it goes. So I'm trying to visualize exactly where the center is on this cube. And the challenge here is that I'm not quite sure if I'm in the center. I don't have a ruler here. I don't have a metric or any way to do it. But the fact is that this is a whole lot easier on the phone block than it is in the real mouth because the real mouth doesn't have sharp edges. So here we go. We're going to guess at where our center is. I believe that's correct. Now I'm looking for perpendicular to the surface and we're going to go ahead and start our drill. Oh, oh my gosh, look at that. As soon as the drill hit the foam that was the compact foam, the dense foam, it knocked right off into the soft foam. But let's see if we can fix this. We'll just go to a bigger size drill. And in going to a bigger size drill, surely we can, you know, now that we know we're getting kicked off to the soft side, we can make it better, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna force it to the left, my left, your right, into the dense bone. So I'm gonna push a little bit harder to the left and and uh, now nah, still, still off. And the main reason why it's still off is these drills in all the kits are not designed to cut on the side. This right here is a cutting flute that's designed to remove waste. This is the part of the drill that actually does the work. So when you try to bodily move this laterally, it doesn't work. You can't move it laterally. All right, we're going to our third drill now. We're gonna try to, once again, try to get this a little bit better. I'm a little off to the left as well so we're gonna yeah so it's it's wallowing around it's a term we use in the south here meaning it's not staying on target and it's moving around it's making my hole considerably larger than the drill that i'm actually using at the time no matter what i do it doesn't want to go into that dense phone it just wants to go into the soft phone it's getting knocked out of position now we're going for the last the last drill and once again still we're going to try to push it into that dense bone because that's where we want it to go. And it's nowhere near the center. Uh, so no matter what I try, it's just really terrible. So let's go to our guided attempt and see how we can do with the guide. The first step with the guided protocol is to insert the guide with the viewing window towards the dense foam. And we must ensure that it's fully seated so I can look at the viewing window to ensure that it is down all the way. And now we can see that it's color-coded and it's telling us we're gonna use the green protocol because it's green on the top. We insert our guide sleeve in, and just to be fair, I'm not going to hold it on the table because I was not holding the first one on the table. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to simply drill down through the guide and then done. So I don't know what's going on. I can't see it, but I have to trust the guide's doing its job. So now we're gonna do our second drill. All we're doing here is changing the diameter of the drill, not the length. So we'll go ahead and start the drill, go to leg, and we're done. So notice how efficient we're in and out with the drill. There's no sense in lingering inside the hole. We go in, we go out, and we are done. The average drill time for any of these cases is about 1.2 seconds. It is extremely quick. There is no thinking involved in this. It's very mechanical. We're gonna place our third drill in position. And that's it, the third drill is done. So this is our last drill in our sequence. And that's it, last drill is done. Now, the question is, how well did we do? So we're gonna go ahead and pull our surgical guide off and we're right in the center of the glue line. Now, when we compare that to what we have over here, you can see a substantial difference in the size of the hole as well as the location of the hole. And that's because these drills over here were 
moving in the South, we call it wallering around. So the drills were not being constrained and they were hitting the hard bone and they were bouncing off of it, making a hole that's not the right size as well as not in the right location. Now that we've done the experiment, let's see what the data says about what all your other colleagues have done. When compiling the data, if you look here, we have the green dot, which represents our goal. Each one of the blue dots represents the doctor's placement using non-guided. And there's a lot of variability here. The red dots represent the same doctors using a guided system. So no difference in the doctor's skill set, just utilizing the guide resulted in this amazing accuracy around the green dot with the red placements. So the take home here is look at the accuracy and precision associated with using a guide versus using no guide. So now that you know you need to use a guide, what's next? You need to know what kind of guide to use. Check out this video right here for all the details about the different types of guides available to you.